Okay, welcome back. Chapter 9, the organizational plan. I typically find in these classes, this is where people learn a ton. Um, while the financial section is typically where people have to go the furthest, um, people learn a lot about how to organize a business um, in these types of chapters. So make sure you're doing the reading here as well. Uh, so developing the management team. Potential investors are interested in the management team because that's a direct correlation to rates of success. So uh, the management team, its ability and their commitments to the new venture. Investors look for teams that operate a business full time. Uh, investors perceive an entrepreneur taking a large salary as a lack of commitment to the business. Generally speaking, you're going to be an entrepreneur and you don't make a ton of money up front. Uh, that's going to come later. Um, the entrepreneur, well, basically think about it. If somebody's asking you for a loan and they're just going to give it all to themselves to go buy TVs or whatnot, that's not a great investment. You want somebody, if I'm going to give them money, uh, that they're going to go use it to make more money. And generally speaking, that means the entrepreneur in the short run goes without. They have considerable skills that they can leverage with the financial capital you give them to turn something relatively small into something rather large. In terms of biblical aspects, think about the parable of the talents. Um, you know, God gives you uh, resources that they expect you to do something with. So um, entrepreneurs should consider the role of the board in supporting management of their new venture. So you got to put together the right management team. So legal forms of business, three basic forms are proprietorship. That's kind of a single owner partnership, a variation of an LLP. Uh, C corporation, a variation of an S corporation. One additional form is the LLC, the limited liability company, which is honestly, at least in the this state, in this area, that's generally what, what people do is LLC. 110 bucks and a little bit of time on the South Carolina State uh, Secretary of State website, and you can have an LLC. Uh, the entrepreneurs should evaluate the pros and cons of legal forms prior to submitting a business plan. You need to be specific on why you organized how you did. Um, Entrepreneurs should determine the priority of several factors, including tax factors, which is a big one. So you want to limit liability and you want to consider the tax implications of how you organize your business. This is not a lemonade stand. I want to know. How exactly are you organizing your business? So ownership and owner liability. In a proprietorship, pr bleh, proprietorship, easy for me to say, the owner has full responsibility. In a partnership, owners may be general partners and or limited partners. So, like, how do you divvy up the partnership? A partnership is a legal entity, an LLP. Uh, in a corporation, ownership hinges on the shares of stocks. I know a lot of people start, like, smaller LLP, LLCs, and then end up being corporations, so they change over time, so that can happen. A proprietor's general is a, and a general partner are liable for all aspects of the business. It's on you. Corporation owners are liable for any of their investments. So, if a corporation goes belly up, people just lose their stock investment. Creditors may seize personal assets of proprietors and general partners. That's why people kind of limit that. Limited partners are liable only for their contributions. LLP is in the form of an LLC. Both protects personal assets. So pretty much every business I've ever started was in an LLC. Not to kind of poison the well there, but I'm just being realistic. Most people do LLCs to start. Startup costs and continuity of businesses. For proprietorship, startup costs are minimal. Um, so like it's kind of like your lemonade standard partnership agreement requires legal advice and fees. How do people get into the partnership? How do they get out of the partnership? Much more importantly, exit strategy is incredibly important. So that can get very complex very quick. A corporation can also get com complex. It's created only by statute, register, meets FJ requirements, filing fees, taxes, legal. As you get to be a cord if you get to be a corporation, you're going to need an accountant. You're going to need an attorney. Um, I would go ahead and tell you to get an accountant or attorney. I don't care if you're doing a lemonade stand. Um, you really need those people to help you navigate these things. It's worth every penny. They, may, they save you or make you more money than you'll ever spend with them, in my opinion. The death of a sole proprietor terminates the business because it's just them. The death of a general partner terminates the partnership. There must be a buyout or a takeover um, of the share that may be allowed. That needs to be specified in writing in a contract. Death of a limited partner has no effect on continuity, so the business stays, but you got to figure out a way how to re-divvy up the LLP. Corporation has the most continuity over time. That's why a lot of people start out like an LLC and end up being a corporation as they gain more and more success. Transferability and capital requirements. Sole proprietors may sell or transfer any assets, kind of like owning a car, right? Uh, limited partners in general partnership can sell any time to one another. General partners have to give the first right of refusal to their partners, then they may sell. LLPs um, do not allow transfers, so there's some legal aspects here. Shareholders in a corporation may sell at any time. Shareholder agreements may limit some sales. And the S corporation only allows transfer to an individual. Proprietors must take out loans. See, you see how like this is like a thirty thousand foot view. 
you guys need to do the read. This isn't going to substitute for the read. Proprietors must take out loans or add personal capital because uh, it's just them. Borrowing may require relinquishing some equity. So think Shark Tank when you, hey, I'm going to give you 51% of my company and thus I lose control, but I need this money. Uh, partnership agreements can change if the partnership get a loan, if the partners add funds, that type of thing. They're, they're kind of breathing documents that need to update over time as well. New capital for a corporation can be raised by selling stocks or bonds by borrowing money in the name of the corporation. Um, <clears throat> management control and distribution of proper, um, profits rather across these different types of organizations. Sole proprietor has the most control over decisions and partnerships. Uh, majority rules and limited partners have no control over business decisions. Management controls um, daily business decisions in a corporation. Long-term decisions may require a stockholder vote. Stockholders affect operations through the board that they elect. Proprietors receive all profits, um, but also receive all the losses and all the liability. Partnership agreement outlines distribution of profits and losses. Yeah, back to this liability, make sure you're properly insured. A lot of people duck the lawyers and they duck the accountants and they also they duck the liability insurance. You do not want to do that because then they're going to come after you, okay? Partnership agreement outlines distribution of profits and losses. Corporations distribute profits through stockholder dividends. So what's the attractiveness of raising capital, uh, capital i.e. money? Uh, in both the proprietorship and the partnership, the ability to raise capital depends on the success of the business, the capability of the entrepreneur, and so due to personal liability advantages, the corporation is the most attractive form of businesses for raising capital because it's a safer bet for outsiders. Selling shares of stocks, bonds, and compiling debt are all ways to raise uh, capital with limited liability. So a lot of these organizations go back to, hey, how do you want the organization to function, but mostly how do you want to be able to raise funds and limit your liability at the same time? So tax rates for various forms of businesses, a few major tax changes are noted, but uh, many un unmentioned minor differences can also be important to the entrepreneur, i.e. get yourself a good accountant. All C corporations receive permanent tax cut from 35 to 21%. Pass-through businesses receive 20% reduction in taxable income, which expires in 2025. Exceptions include 20% reduction of service-based pass-through businesses uh, to, is only applicable to the income after salary. Attorneys, doctors, realtors, engineers, and accountants typically fall under this category. For other employee-driven pass-through organizations, the tax deduction is 20% limit to 50% of the company payroll. That's usually restaurants and manufacturers. I blew through that for a reason. You're sitting there saying, Dr. Diesel, how in the world am I supposed to get all that? You're not. That's why you hire an accountant. That's what they do, man. This is this is this is this is confusing and convoluted. That's why yours truly, anytime I do any type of businesses, and I do some businesses, this is why I hire the accountant and I can see what you know sports games on this weekend and while knowing that my accountant has this on lock. It's my advertisement for them. Um, if you need one in the upstate of South Carolina, let me know. I, I've got a few one, a few good ones. Uh, the LLC versus the S corporation. Venture capitalists desire the LLC or limited liability company. Why? Because they kind of become your partner and they want to limit their liability as well, but also maximize through a great business plan, which I'm sure you guys are working on for me. Um, they want to get an investment that's definitely going to make them money and not get them sued, if that makes sense. Regulation changes made the LLC more attractive. The LLC is automatically taxed as a partnership unless the entrepreneur actively chooses to be taxed as a corporation. There's a few little forms you check when you're organized that takes care of all this. The S Corporation uh, was once the most popular organization structure by New Ventures. Growth has declined due to the LLC acceptance in all 50 states. Basically, LLC has become like that, that uniform thing across 50 states because every state has a little bit different rules. And if you do business across states, you got to know everybody's rules. Again, an accountant is good to have. An attorney is good to have. Um, LLC has become extremely popular. Now, what's the S corporation? It combines the tax advantages of a partnership and a corporation. Income is shared equally in tax as personal income, and shareholders may use deductions of the businesses. Uh, again, you got an attorney to help you get organized, an accountant to help you with things like depreciation and square footage, let's say, of your home that you're using towards the business. Be careful there. Um, you know, if you're leasing an office, if you own an office, that type of thing. Passing of the 1996 Small Business Protection Act loosened. The rules governing the S Corporation revised in 2004. The intent was to make the S Corporation as advantageous as the LLC. So as things grew, you kind of grew out of the LLC into more of a corporation type situation. The S Corporation status may be monitored or maintained, requires an affirmation of shareholders, and if lost, can be reelected five years and some costs. So 
there's a lot of set of rules as you get into corporations. They're much more complicated than LLC to begin. That's why a lot of businesses um, look at these differences between an S corporation and LLC. Um, in the long run, they're minimal, but right out of the gate, uh, corporations are much more complicated than an LLC. Advantages of the S corporation over C corporation, capital gains and losses are taxed as personal income. So think of like S corporation is like the dollar menu and C corporation is like when you're getting up there on like, you know, the higher up menu of, of ordering off of a menu, if you will, of uh, how your organization is organized. So S corporation advantages over a C corporation, capital gains or losses are taxed as personal income. That's a little more straightforward and shared equally with shareholders. S corporation is not taxed. Shareholders can uh, retain the same liability as C corporations. S corporations are not subject to a minimal tax, unlike C corporation. Here we go again, right? Stock is transferable to family members for S corporation. Stock may be voting or non-voting. S corporation may use cash method of accounting. Corporate uh, gains and losses are deductible directly from the shareholders to offset personal gain, capital gains and losses. Again, convoluted. Get an attorney. Get an accountant. Focus on keeping your customers happy. I never understand people say, I'll never understand this, but I'm also too cheap to hire an attorney or an accountant. That's my lesson for you as I read through these things. Now, disadvantages of an S corporation, depending on the amount of net income, there may be a, and, and you know what, if you get all this, God bless you. I have a PhD in a lot of this stuff, and it still confuses me. So if you're really confused right now and you listen to this, listen to this presentation, it's going to be okay. Hire a great accountant. Pay for a good lawyer. Get it set up. They, if they're any good, they'll make this stuff make sense for you. I'm doing my best as you do the reading. Hopefully, um, you know these are several pages for each slide, so um, make sure you're doing that reading. Now, you need to know enough to know if someone's telling you the truth, okay? And you need to know enough to know if someone's stealing from you. Beyond that, you don't have to memorize all, memorize all this. We don't have a test on this in this class. We have a project that I need you to address these things. But here's where we're leaning towards in terms of how we're going to organize, and here's the advantages and disadvantages of that approach versus some other approach. But here's the attorney we'd like to hire. Here's the accountant we'd like to hire. And we're going to let them guide us through that. If you put that in your report, I'm going to sit there and shake my, hand and put a, shake my head and put a big old check mark beside it because that's what I'm begging you to do. Attorneys and accountants are worth it. And if you're an attorney, you're an accountant, this is how you make money, understanding these things. So disadvantages, back to the slide, of... An S corporation, depending on the amount of net income, there may be tax advantage to using the new 21% C corporation tax rate. And I can guarantee that's probably changed like two or three times since this slide was put together. S corporation cannot deduct most shareholder fringe benefits. The S corporation must adopt a calendar year for tax purposes. Only one class of stock, common stock, is permitted. The net loss of S corporation is limited to the shareholder stock plus loans to the business. S corporation cannot have more than 100 shareholders. So these aren't really big ones. Uh, limited liability company, my personal favorite. Characteristics of an LLC, a partnership corporate uh, corporation hybrid. Corporations have shareholders. Partners, partnerships have partners. The LLC has members. No shares are issued, uh, which cuts through a lot of the complication of the previous two slides. And each member owns an interest in the business. So it could be 50-50, 70-30. It could be 33-33-33. Um, liability does not extend beyond the member's capital contribution. Members may transfer their interest only with unanimous written consent of the remaining members. The IRS automatically taxes the LLC as a partnership, uh, generally speaking, on a quarterly basis, both for state and federal. The standard uh, term of an LLC is 30 years, but the dissolution is likely when one member dies, the business is bankrupt, or any members choose to dissolve the business. Laws governing the LLC differ from state to state. So you need a good attorney for your state. Uh-huh. What do I keep saying? Attorney and accountant. Makes sense. I guess if you get any three things from this course, A, you need a plan. So that's why we're doing a business plan. B, you need to listen to me and get a good accountant. C, you need to listen to me and get a good attorney. Okay? Class of Smith. No, it's not. I'm still going. Uh, advantages of an LLC. An LLC has advantages over an S corporation. LLC offers a distinct advantage in, highly, highly, in a highly leveraged uh, enterprise, i.e. more debt. The LLC may have tax advantages in some states. South Carolina, they do. A one or more individuals, corporations, partnerships, or trusts, or other entities can join to form an LLC. Members share income, profit, expense, deductions, loss, and credit, and equity of the LLC among themselves. So it's shared within there. It's, to me, it's a lot more straightforward. 
Uh, I hate to sound like such an advocate for one particular system, but I'm a fan. A major concern is using an LLC in international business. While it's really, re really recognized in the 50 states, if you go beyond the country, it becomes much more dicey. So it's more of a corporation type thing when you go to international business. LLC, because you're not protected in those countries by an LLC, protected by a corporation on the world stage, for the most part. LLC offers an advantages of, uh, of the C corporation, but with the pass-through tax to its members. Um, that's actually pretty straightforward because then you take in money for yourself and just claim it at the end of the year. Just make sure you're saving to pay your big tax bill at the end of the year. And then I would recommend doing things on a quarterly because it's much more manageable that way. Venture capitalists like the LLC for its flexibility, mostly because you can get in and out of contracts. You can deal with it a little more straightforward and they can join or you know dissolve or get out of LLCs much more easily than corporations. So when you're designing your organization, the design of the initial organization will be simple as the entrepreneur may perform all the functions alone. A common problem and a significant reason for failure is when the entrepreneur is unwilling to give up responsibility, including others. If so, the entrepreneur may have difficulty transitioning from startup to growing the business and maintaining that success and making it you know, bigger and bigger over time. As the work increases, the organization structure will expand. Effective interviewing and hiring must be in place, but you're planning for that. Uh, all design decisions involving personnel reflect formal structure. As you grow and grow and grow, you get more and more informal. An organization that has an informal structure, organizational culture, and it evolves over time and needs to be addressed by the entrepreneur. The organization must identify the major activities required to operate effectively okay, and efficiently. Um, members' expectations in design. The design of the organization is formal, explicit indication of what is expected of each member. That should be explicit in your business plans. Expectations are grouped into five areas organizational structure the organization chart planning measurement evaluation scheme the goals and objectives of the venture and how you're going to measure them rewards what are your bonuses promotion and praise uh, selection criteria guidelines for hiring each new position what does that look like how are you going to comply with hr law training on and off the job formal education and learning skills how you're going to acquire the skills that you don't already have so what's your plan for that the organization's design may be pretty simple or it may be relatively complex that's up to you I just need you to make it realistic. Changing roles in an evolving organization. As the organization evolves, the entrepreneur's decision roles become more critical for an effective organization. The primary concern is to adapt to changes and seek new ideas. When a new idea is found, the entrepreneur must initiate development or delegate responsibility. There will be a need to respond to the pressure of putting out fires. Um, you can't have your, let's say, newly equivalent to a CEO doing everything. Uh, they have to be able to delegate, so you have to have a team of responsible people and how will that be handled. The entrepreneur will become an allocator of resources, delegating budgets and responsibilities. The entrepreneur becomes a negotiator as the one only person with the appropriate authority to do so. So how does that evolve over time? It becomes more and more delegated, so you have to be organized. Um, building the management team and the culture. Culture is so important, man. If you've ever had a job that you enjoyed, it's usually because of the people around you, and that's, you know, if they're really cool and everything's very productive, everybody works a little bit harder because the culture's great. And then it's just kind of like a rolling ball of butcher knives the other way around. The culture's horrible, the people don't get along, there's conflict, and not a lot gets done. Uh, you can go into a fast food restaurant and tell within about three minutes or less if they have a good culture or not because the burgers are coming out, the biscuits are coming out either fast or slow, high quality, that type of thing. Um, I have a local Burger King that I go to, and I can, that, well, I say I go to, I go to maybe once a year. Um, and then Chick-fil-A much more often. Uh, the reason why I go to Chick-fil-A much more often, it's much more efficient. It seems like people don't want to hurt me. Um, but they also say, my pleasure. Um, and seem to mean it. The entrepreneur needs the right mix of people to assume the responsibilities outlined in the organizational structure. The team must be able to accomplish three functions. Execute the business plan. So you need to have a business plan to execute. Identify fundamental changes in the business as they occur. You know, so they can find problems but also identify solutions. And adjust the plan based on changes that will maintain profitability. First, the entrepreneur must define the skills and abilities needed to meet the goals of the business plan. That's part of the business plan. Consider the personality and the character of each individual. The culture will be unique to each business. The entrepreneur must delegate to create a vibrant culture. So here are your strategies to recruit an effective team. A desired culture must match the business strategy. Workplace must motivate and reward good work. There must be flexibility to try different things and spend extra time in the hiring process. People are more than their skills. Character is important. You need people who are responsible, who are going to treat your customers well, who will show up. Um, character is so important. Um, 
I know as a, as a previous and current hiring manager, um, I, I, can, I can instill, install, educate some skills. I need people who are going to show up, do their jobs, be responsible, and bring solutions to the table. I could have someone that comes in with an incredible skill set, but they're a jerk and they're going to ruin my culture. That hurts my team. I'd rather be a little deficient on skill because I can bring that up uh, in my people than deficient in culture and teamwork. I need culture and teamwork. So uh, understand the significance of leadership within the organization. Leadership should establish core values, provide tools, set expectations so employees can effectively complete their jobs. Um, things like reward systems, uh, rule number one, principle number four of economics, people respond to incentives. So if you incentivize positive behavior, guess what? You're going to get some positive behavior. Finding an effective team and creating a positive culture is is as critical as having an innovative and marketable product. A lot of people can have chicken sandwiches, but they don't have Chick-fil-A's culture. That's why it's the Lord's chicken. Uh, the role of the board of directors, the board of directors may serve a number of functions. Reviewing, and oper reviewing the operating capital budgets, developing long-term strategic plans for growth and expansion, supporting day-to-day -day activities, resolving conflicts among owners, ensuring the proper use of assets, and developing a network of information sources. And if I could just say something you need in your life as an operation, a board of directors, be careful who you put on it. You need encouragers and people who have experience and people who are where you want to be. And they will give you great advice that's beyond the business. Uh, they'll give you life advice that helps you make wiser decisions. Choosing a board and the Sarbanes-Oxley Act uh, the intent, I'll let you read about Sarbanes. Um, the intent was for an independent functioning of board of directors. Board members must uh, must blowing the whistle on any, must be blowing the whistle on any discrepancies. Many startups uh, do not plan to have a formal board of directors. This is something that's usually down the line. Equity investors may insist on the formation of a board if it's bigger and one board seat. They want to be on it so they can have some input on where their money is being used. Choose board members carefully to meet the following criteria. Those with skills, industry, experience, and commitment to the mission. they got to make sense, right? Uh, those who will be informed and assist in important decisions. they got to be able to give good advice. Those willing to exchange ideas and use their experience. They can bring value to the table. There should be an odd number of board members, and they should be regularly evaluated. Compensation can include shares of stock, stock options, and cash. Board of Advisors, again, everybody needs a Board of Advisors. This is Board of Directors, here's the Board of Advisors. Serves only as an advisor in capacity, is not subject to regulation of the Sarbanes-Oxley. So Sarbanes-Oxley, these guys are subject to. Board of Advisors, not so much. Meetings are less frequent and discuss important decisions. Board of Advisors is very useful for a family business. They can give you good advice um, to avoid pitfalls and, and, and different advantages. Selection process is similar to selecting a board of directors. They compensate on a per meeting basis or with stock or stock options. Stock options, rather. Um, evaluate members as their contribution to, to helping you meet your mission. Board of advisors can provide important reality checks, flexibilities, um, make these boards a desirable alternative to the more formal board of directors. So what I would say here, this is more of a corporate thing with a board of directors. This is more of a smaller, right out of the gates, here's two or three people who are going to help me advise me through this situation and here's how I'm going to take care of them. Um, the organization, the use of advisors, the entrepreneur may need outside advisors such as <clears throat> accountants, bankers, lawyers, and market researchers. Bold this, accountants and a good lawyer, you need them. Uh, seek out the best advisors and involve them thoroughly. Hiring and managing outside experts can be viewed as hiring advice suppliers. Even after the advisors are hired, the entrepreneur should question their advice. You know, just don't take it, you know, you know, as, you know, law. Make sure it makes sense for you. But, again, I know I've said it a hundred times in this course. I hope I have. You need a good accountant. You need a good lawyer. That's how you take things from, you know, Section 3, from my presented business plan, but the organizational plan here. All right? The organizational plan. How are you going to organize? Make sure you're doing the reading. These, these lectures are... Hopefully informative, but they're not enough. Take care.